You faked your death to rescue your family. Now look at you, sitting here alone, cowering in the dark, tinkering line by line. <laughs> you really thought you could scan a line and save the world, line scanner? Read between the lines. This upcoming scan will be your last. No matter where you go or how many lines you scan, I will always be hunting you to the end of the line. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris, a machine vision sales engineer here at Edmund Optics, and this is Bite Sized, a quick, snappy, and digestible way to learn about imaging concepts. And today, we will be discussing line scan cameras, what they are and how to use them. But before that, let's discuss how they differ from their area scan cousins. Here we have a common area scan camera. Most cameras we encounter daily fall under this category. This specific model contains the IMX264, a 5 megapixel area scan sensor. But what does that actually mean? Most area scan sensors contain a rectangular array of pixels. This particular camera's array is 2,448 pixels long by 2,048 pixels tall. By multiplying these numbers together, this gives us a grand total of 5,013,504 pixels. Or 5 megapixels. So what about line scan cameras? This is a line scan camera using a Teledyne Dalsa line scan CMOS chip. Let's see what it looks like. Instead of an array of pixels, we only have one row of pixels 4,096 pixels long, or as it's better known, 4K. You're asking yourself, Chris, how does this work? Well, cadets, a line scan camera takes an object in motion and acquires a single line-by-line -line image and stacks each of these lines together to create a full, final image. I know this is a bit challenging to understand in theory, so let's pop over to the lab to see this phenomenon in action. Welcome to the lab. Here's our line scan camera as well as a high-intensity line light from our friends over at Prophotonics. If I start capturing now, we'll encounter a bit of an issue. Since our object is stationary, our image is incomprehensible. This is because if we do our magnification math, our camera's only capturing a 65 micron wide slice and stacking it repeatedly. But when we get this can of spinning, we get a complete image. Right now, our acquisition or capture rate is set to a fixed value. Telling my camera how many lines to capture per second, or hertz. The current rate is 8 kilohertz, but when I slow down or speed up my object's rotation, we get some interesting results. If our object moves too slowly in respect to our acquisition rate, our image gets stretched out. Currently, our camera is over-triggering, meaning it's capturing the same portion of our can multiple times, and this results in the object looking elongated. And if it moves too fast, it gets squished down. Now we're under-triggering, meaning we're moving too fast so the camera isn't able to capture every portion of our can, creating what looks like a squished image. So now, the question on the tip of your tongue is, Chris, do I have to do the tedious and potentially unreliable work of manually synchronizing my object's motion at the acquisition rate of my camera? And you would be right, this would be tedious and unreliable, and for whatever reason the speed of your object changes, you would have to resynchronize? How do we simplify this synchronization between our motion and acquisition rate? Enter the rotary encoder. This puppy will translate rotational motion into electrical signals, allowing the camera to sync its acquisition rate with the rate of the spinning can. Let's throw this bad boy on the rig. Now, when I speed up or slow down the can's rotation, the resulting image is unaffected. Eureka, we're synchronized. Check out that image. Presenting the Prophotonics Cobra Max LED line light. Thanks to its brightness, we can drive exposure to mere microseconds. These lights are brighter than you could ever imagine. So now what makes these lights so unique is the chip on board technology that Prophotonics has mastered allowing them to pack 38 times the number of LEDs compared to traditional LED technology. So whether you're looking at solar cells, flat panels, or semiconductors, for high-speed inspection applications, the Cobra Max has you covered. Call the number on your screen or visit our website at ebonoptics.com to buy your Cobra Max today. Well, that's never happened before. Anyway, let's compare the line scan image to an area scan camera. 
let's look at the differences. First, the motion blur. Because we're exposing the entire rectangular array instead of a small line, our exposure time is significantly longer, in this case, 3,000 microseconds. Secondly, there's a difference between the evenness of our relative illumination. On the area scan image, we'll see a hot spot across the center of the object. This is because the geometry of the can is more apparent with area scan, where we're taking a flat image of a curved object, versus a line scan camera, which captures geometrically the same position each time, giving us a flatter illumination profile. This is also why it looks like an unwrapped label. Now that we understand the basics of line scan cameras, when should we use them? Line scan is particularly useful when our object is moving and can be synced using an encoder. Ideal for inspection along a conveyor belt, textile inspection, or battery winding. Keep in mind that everything is application dependent. If your object is stationary, use an area scan camera, but always look for ways to optimize your imaging system. Thanks, cadets, for traversing the optical space with me today. If you have any questions, reach out at edmundoptics.com where we have engineers available 24-7 to address your imaging needs. As always, I'm Chris Razzi, and this has been Bite Size.